Check the description for the following discount codes. What we've got here is another sort of entry mid-range quality direct drive wheelbase. And uh, today it's from Camus. It reminds me the way the build quality and the, the sort of choice of, of colored buttons and, and switches and knobs reminds me very much of the stuff I had from Moza. Um, so not high end quality by a long way, but whereas the Moza stuff was priced as if it was high end, this wheelbase and accompanying wheel is about half the price of the Moser stuff. So when we look at this, I'm gonna be looking at it from its price point, rather than comparing it to other high-end direct drive wheels that are literally double the price. So this, at the moment, this 15 Newton meter direct drive wheelbase, it's a servo base wheelbase, and this, this steering wheel, which I'll just give you a quick look at, these two together, $698, which is about 500 quid before any VAT that we would have to pay here in the UK uh, and before shipping as well. So with VAT, it's gonna be what, 625 pounds, something like that, give or take um, loose uh, calculations here. I haven't actually done the, the conversion from dollars to pounds, but that's roughly what it would be. So we're actually looking more along the lines of CSLDD sort of money, really. Um, certainly nowhere near, you know, the DD1 or any of the other higher end wheelbases, SimuCube, um, et cetera. So 15 Newton meters is a reasonable amount of talk and, and often more than enough for most of us. And, and of course we have to take, sometimes you have to take these specifications with a pinch of salt. But what I'm seeing here is a really, this thing weighs an absolute ton. I'll give you a little close up. This thing weighs an absolute ton. It's easily, as heavy, if not heavier, than my DD1. In fact, I'm almost struggling to hold this out in front of me without getting a bit of a shake on. It's that heavy. Now, I don't like the way it looks, speaking of the wheelbase itself. I think it looks very DIY with this choice of, of multi-coloured buttons and knobs and switches. And these are all very, very cheap quality switches and buttons. There's almost a, a toy-like texture to these. And again, I'll show you on the wheel because it's easier to, to hold to the camera. These ones here have got very much a toy-like feel to them. Super, super cheap. Um, but aside from the way it looks and the buttons having a very cheap feel to them, it actually drives okay. It's nowhere near as refined or as detailed as you know Fanatic stuff or some of the other high-end brands. The software is very much sort of clunky and, and poorly translated Chinese. In fact, some of the installation was actually in Chinese and I'm, I'm clicking boxes hoping I'm getting yes rather than cancel because I couldn't read what it said. Again, very much like the Moza stuff I had a while back, um, but to drive, it, it's not too bad. It's super smooth. It's, weirdly, this has got to be one of the smoothest wheelbases, direct drive wheelbases that I felt. Now, I don't know if that's because there's a ton of dampening applied somewhere, but it's just, it does feel very, very smooth, almost unnaturally smooth. But yeah, the, the driving experience, which is really what's important, regardless of anything else, price and build quality, how's it actually drive, Carl? It's okay. You know, it's, it's not as good as, as higher end stuff. It's not as refined. The detail isn't as, oh, this is all a bit subjective, but for me, it feels like everything's just a little bit soft is the best way I can think of to describe this. The information, you know, it feels, it feels like when I'm driving it with the, with the DD1 strength wise, but everything just feels a little bit soft. You know, and I've played around with the settings. There isn't a huge amount of settings to play around with in the camera software, it's just a few sliders. Um, and I got it to, you know, how I how I like it, set the, the force up to be similar to what I'm used to on my DD1. 
um, but everything just feels a little bit soft, a little bit smooth. Like I say, maybe like there's some, some dampening or some sort of filter going on, or maybe that is just the characteristics of this servo motor, you know, who knows? But that's how it drives, it's, it's okay. If this was my only direct drive wheelbase, um, you know, and I hadn't experienced better, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine, it's no problem, it works okay. Um, things like, uh, you know, rumble strips, curbs, they, they come through the wheelbase just fine, again, but very smooth, same as everything else, um, but not, not too bad. It was better than I was expecting for the price point. Again, it's $700, so with VAT in the UK, somewhere around the 600, 650 pound mark with the wheel. But the issue we have, and I'll just show you the power supply as well. Um, again, cheap power supplies are really easy to spot because they weigh absolutely nothing. This is quite a hefty power supply. It probably weighs similarly to my Fnatic DD1. Um, it says it's 360 watts, 10 amps at 36 volts on the back, should you be interested in that. So that, you know, feels pretty hefty. Again, leading me to not really question the torque claims because it feels like there's 15 newton meters of torque and that's peak torque as far as I can make out from their website and their spec. Um, it, they don't really say, they just call it maximum torque, so I'm guessing that's the best it can do, um, you know, rather than uh, that being what it can hold and then peaking at a higher figure. But yeah, all these buttons and everything are configurable. The power button's a weird one on here. It, it clicks as if it clicks on and clicks off, but it doesn't. It's a momentary switch. You press and hold to turn it off uh, and a single press turns it on. That actually caught me out in the beginning because I was... It, it feels and sounds like it should just be a physical on off switch. I'm turning it off and going, why is it not turning off Carl? And I thought, let's just hold it down for a little while and you hold it down and then the wheelbase shuts down. So, you know, again, just sort of choice of cheapy buttons we've got here, but this thing really is super heavy. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, on the back, I mean, I, I'll, I did show you, but I'll just show you again what ports we've got on the back there. So we've got your power, couple of shifter inputs, emergency stop input, an RS-485 input, I don't know what that would be for. Then we've got pedals, handbrakes, and another shifter input, and then the USB, um, USB-B port there as well. So they have got on the website, they've got pedals. I can see shifters and handbrakes as well, but I've only been sent this for now. Maybe I'll see if I can get hold of some of the rest to try out with it but that's the wheelbase let's get that out of the way as i say to, oh just actually one other thing to talk about the quick release on the front here this piece that you see here you see these bolts that go in that piece was separate and there's a couple of wires with a little two pin plug behind there that you have to plug in to this plate with the copper contacts on when i put these screws in, I tried to space them out evenly, and this is indicative of sort of cheaper uh, Chinese quality control. Not all of these holes had properly cut threads. So I ended up with two of them like side by side, rather than them all being evenly spaced because the threads just weren't any good on the other holes. So, you know, you get a, a little indication of the sort of quality control that goes on with these with these things but you know it's it's chinese it is the price it is and the same really goes for this steering wheel i don't think it looks too bad apart from the horrific choice of tomi my first steering wheel button colors uh, and they do feel very cheap very flimsy very toy like the steering wheel itself also has a fair bit of flex actually in the wheel here um, and i'll put a video up of this all in use if i haven't already uh, in fact, I'll put a clip up showing you the flex, both in the wheel and in this quick release. Now the quick release works fairly well, actually. The first time I tried to get it on, it didn't seem to want to go on very well. And I had to dick about a fair bit trying to get it to work. Um, you have to push this little pin in at the top here and then slide this collar back and it stays locked back in place like that and then once you slot it on it pings into position but yeah the first time i tried it it just didn't want to work very well but once i'd gone on once and come off then it seemed to be okay but there is a lot of play both in this quick release and in the steering wheel itself i think it may even be where 
this screws to the sort of back plate, the center piece here. There was some play. The paddles are very, very light and feel very flimsy as well. I mean, they function just fine um, and they appear to be magnetic in the way that they feel and the fact that we can see what looks like magnets on the back. Um, I guess this is real carbon fiber. I mean, I'm not an expert, but it looks like it could be. The paddles are adjustable. There's a couple of screws um, whether you'll see them or not, just in here that allow you to unscrew them and slide the paddles in and out to where you want. There's actually probably half an inch of adjustment there, so you can bring them out a little bit further should you want. They were fine where they were for me, and none of the buttons ever missed a press or, or didn't respond when I was testing this out. So whilst it all feels a little bit cheap, it did actually work okay. Again, talking about cheapness, if we just look at how this material is fixed in place, it's very rough cut edges. Uh, the finish, you know, isn't very good. I'm sure it'll probably wear its way, you know, adrift at some point. But, um, but again, the price point, you know, $700 for the steering wheel and a 15 Newton meter wheelbase. We have to bear that in mind. When you don't pay a lot for something, you shouldn't expect to get a lot for something. So whilst the Moser stuff, I hammered on quite hard because it was being, they were charging the money you would pay for established high-end direct drive wheelbases and wheels, this comes in at half the price. So the poorer quality of the buttons and perhaps the quality control when it comes to the threads on those, you know, those, those bolt holes that I had to use is something you expect when you're paying half the price of everyone else on the market. So that really probably sums up what we've got here. You get what you pay for. For direct drive 15 Newton meter wheelbase, um, as I say, I'm not questioning that because it feels like it and it's bloody heavy. Um, you're paying half the price you would anywhere else. So I, I can't sort of, I can't recommend it because of its quality and its performance. But at the same time, if, your budget only allows five or 600 quid or whatever it is with shipping to your country and you want a lot of torque, then maybe this is an option for you. It's certainly not the worst wheelbase in the world and it's priced appropriately. But you know, certainly the experience from any of the other high-end direct drive wheelbases, CMU Cube or Fnatic, for example, is a much nicer experience. The software is a lot more polished and easier to use. There's more adjustment should you want it. You know, even the CSLDD, which is only at best an eight Newton meter wheelbase, the overall experience is nicer. This just has basically double the torque, you know. But there is this, like I say, there's this weird overall feeling of smoothness or, or dampening that's that's supplied to the to the wheelbase, which kind of, like I say, it feels a bit unnatural in that respect. But I mean, that's kind of the best way I can describe this. You, you're getting what you pay for as far as the quality and the construction and the choice of buttons and, and materials go. There's a fair whack of torque available and the software isn't particularly refined. But you know, maybe you're in a country where you, you can't get hold of some of the other uh, brands or maybe prices are just far, far out of your budget you'll still be able to race and have a good time. It just won't be as good as some other high-end direct drive wheelbases. But again, they're priced much higher. So I'll put a link in the description um, because perhaps for some people, you know, the, the quality, the construction, the way it performs is acceptable for the price you pay. The only thing we can't really comment on here is of course longevity. How well is it gonna last before there's a fault with the wheelbase before a button stops working and what sort of warranty and support you're actually going to get should you buy one. Because that is a little bit of a gamble. You know, just think of wish.com, you know, or AliExpress, you can buy things from there and some stuff might actually be okay for the money you pay for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but then something fails, you know, and I'm not an advocate of buying things from Wish or AliExpress either really, because it's always that gamble. And I think that's what we've got here. And the same with the Moser stuff, you know, there's always gonna be a gamble as to 
how long everything lasts and what sort of support you're going to get from a warranty perspective. But there we go. That is my review of the Camus, what is this, GT1, I think they call it, um, 15 newton meter wheelbase and steering wheel. Now, weirdly, the steering wheel you see on the website actually looks different to this one, but this is the one that you, you get, so it seems. But yes, that's my review. There's my thoughts. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.